Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. Those of you who have been in the hobby for uh, quite some time may remember diatom filters. I remember when I used to work in a pet store uh, <laughs> when I was a teenager. Uh, we had one and we also sold them. But as in all things, it has fallen out of favor and uh, I don't even know if you can buy them anymore. But that doesn't matter because uh, I'm going to build one for you. I'm going to take this crinoline and this old standpipe I rescued from a tank I demolished and of course some acrylic and PVC and we're going to put one together. I've cut up the acrylic. Uh, this is not going to be for the actual filter part, believe it or not. This is going to be a box and I won't show you the gluing together process because you've seen it so many times. But this is going to sit inside the aquarium. And the purpose of this is to get around the most annoying aspect I found about diatom filters. And that is the charging process, uh, getting the actual diatom powder into the filter where it belongs. I'm not going to show you or explain it too much to you right now because it'll become very clear uh, when I actually do this. But just imagine uh, the, the box there in my right hand is going to be inside the tank and the cylinder is going to be on the outside. And as with the uh, pressure water polish I built a little while ago, it is going to have uh, three pieces, a bottom and then uh, a double layered top. So I can bolt that together and it is going to allow me to take it apart. You know, you know, the, you know the drill. So anyway, I'm going to drill two one inch holes and then uh, two two inch holes. Uh, the other one only had one of each. And then we're going to, again, drill four more holes for the bolts and then glue it all together and it should be uh, pretty much all there is to the building process. At this point you may be asking why build a diatom filter? For those of you who have never worked with them before, diatom filters are what I would call an extremely fine particle filter. And my apologies, there's some technical stuff here at this point. By extremely fine particles I mean it will filter out down to the size of a single cell. Not the single cell size of a prokaryote, like bacteria, but down to the single cell size of a eukaryote, which uh, in this case is going to be the single cell floating algae that's in uh, one of my aquariums. The reason it can do that is uh, diatoms have a calcium structure in them, a very fine intricate one. And once they've passed on and they've been dried out, uh, that structure allows you to filter out, like I said, very, very fine particles. Well, I think that's enough technical mumbo-jumbo for one video, so let's get back to the build here. This should actually start looking quite familiar to you, and that's because this is pretty much the, the same format for every canister filter out there. There is an input, there's an output, there's a chamber for where the media goes, and then there's some device that's going to keep the media from uh, getting into the aquarium. And like I said, that's pretty much standard for all of them. Now I'm going to show you this particular uh, glue up here. Uh, the main reason for it is it is the most important part <laughs> of this build. Uh, it's going to have a lot of stress on it. So off camera, I uh, put the, the cylinder on the lathe and I trued up both ends. made sure they're parallel and made sure they're perfectly square and smooth. And the reason for that is that will give me the strongest joint. Now the other thing I want to cover here, <laughs> just to stave off a few comments, uh, the glue I use is not really glue, it is uh, methylene chloride. And what methylene chloride is, it's a solvent, and what it does, it dissolves both sides of the joint, and then when it evaporates, it leaves nothing but acrylic behind. And what that is, is called a chemical weld. So there you go, hopefully that <laughs> answers that question. Now. The other problem, with, or the part about this that I wanted to show is whenever you're doing this kind of uh, glue up, it's very difficult to get the inside seam. And the nice thing about methylene chloride, it is very runny. So if you put a drop or two there, you can turn the joint around and it will seep into all the cracks that you missed <laughs> from the outside. So there you go. There's all the secrets to gluing acrylic. And it does make a very nice joint, which is kind of uh, important. <laughs> So here we go, this is where it's going to go. This is going to build, uh, bolt on top just like the other one. Uh, there's going to be a bead of silicone between the two plates. Now all I need to do here is the inside pipe, that uh, rescued piece of porous pipe, uh, the standpipe, 
it needs to have as much possible uh, surface area as possible in this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn down uh, one of the fittings. This is the female fitting that's going to screw on uh, to the top plate. I'm just going to shorten that uh, as much as I can and still leave uh, the joint uh, functional. It's still kind of important. And unfortunately, my bad there for the camera angle, it, you can't really quite see it. But it's just a matter of uh, getting that down as much as possible and then uh, putting a bit of a camfer, uh, sorry, chamfer on the edge there. You can see this part quite easily. There you go. This makes it nice and smooth and easy and as short as possible. And then what I'm going to do is this pipe here, which is all it is, is uh, if you buy a length of uh, PVC pipe, you end up with what's a, a flared end at one end. And it just happened to fit just ever so nicely inside that uh, stand pipe. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to shorten that down um, so that it will, again, uh, maximize the amount of the uh, pipe uh, that I can put the uh, crinoline around. So that's going to fit on here like this. And then I'm going to flip it over here and do the same to the other side. And again, of course, just uh, true that all up and get it so that it, again, is just gives me the most uh, surface area possible. It's very easy to machine this. And they, actually, one of the things I sh uh, should mention here is I rarely ever machine uh, PVC because it doesn't machine as well as the Delrin does, but you can do it. You just need a, a sharper uh, tool than uh, you would normally need for anything else. So there you go. I'm just going to stick these together. And one other thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to build a little end cap for the other end, just so you know it stays where it needs to go. And I did all that off camera because, uh, first off, my battery died, <laughs> and secondly, uh, it's the same as every other bushing I made. It just uh, needs to fit in there like this. So there you go, I've shortened it as much as I can, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to attach uh, the crinoline to it, and then the method for attaching that is just going to be zip ties, uh, nothing fancy. I'm going to need to obviously be able to take that apart from time to time and uh, clean it out, so I just wanted to make it something simple. And the end cap just pops in the other end. The only thing that's important here is the joints need to be all quite tight, because the powder is very, very fine. Like, imagine a extremely fine uh, flour, and that's pretty much what it's like. So that's the reason why I'm using Kremlin. It has a very fine weave, and if you're wondering what it's made out of, it's just uh, polyester. So it's the same as the, uh, the wool you would put in a filter. So I was going to wrap this up on this. Uh, it doesn't really need to be more than one layer, uh, so uh, <laughs> that part really is not important at all. So I just zip tied it together, and then that's pretty much the end of the build. The only other thing that's different is you'll notice I use some T joints instead of elbows on that. And that was simply because uh, I didn't have any. I didn't want to run it and buy any. So I was going to fill the chamber up with water. You can see in the tank there's an awful lot of algae there. So keep an eye on that and try to remember what that looks like because hopefully that's all going to go away. The charging process ended up being a lot smoother than I remember for sure. The inside box uh, on this uh, design really, really helped. All I had to do was lift up the doors, uh, plug the pump in, let it fill the chamber, and then uh, once it was all, you know, running properly, add this, the diatom powder. Now because I haven't uh, run this before, I, w I wasn't sure exactly how much to add. Uh, I remember the old ones required a fair amount of powder, uh, but apparently this one that doesn't. I ended up adding more than I needed to, I'm pretty sure, uh, but it doesn't really matter much. It just uh, ends up with a bit of waste. So. What's going to happen is the powder hits the water, gets stirred by the current, uh, pumped through the pump, and it gets in the chamber. And then once it runs into the Kremlin, it starts being filtered out. Uh, not right away. I mean, some of it will adhere, and then as it gradually accumulates, it filters itself out, actually, which is kind of cool. So there's how much I use. Uh, not a whole lot at all. And then I'm going to fast forward this, and you'll gradually see the chamber clear up. And watch the... Uh, the, the uh, piece of uh, filter rod there with the crinoline on it. It's kind of cool because it just accumulates like a mat of it there. And the most important thing to remember in this is don't unplug the pump because the second you do, uh, all that will just fall right off. It's being held on there by water pressure and that's, that's all it's being held on there with. So there's the algae in the tank. So once this clears up like this, I'm going to lift the doors and then I'm going to do a bit of a 
every 30 minutes or so I'm going to come back and we're going to have a look at it and you're going to see how it clears up. It's, a, it's actually a really neat filter design. It's just not practical for most people. So here we are, 30 minutes in. Look at how much green is on there. That is all just the algae. It's quite amazing. And you can see after even 30 minutes, there's actually a drastic change in the amount of algae that's left in the water. And an hour in, again, uh, much better still. I think in total I did about three or four hours. I only uh, filmed or sorry timed the first uh, couple of hours of it and then I went and had supper and did a few other things and came back and uh, did the final wrap up for this. But pretty much you can let it run as long as you like. It's not going to harm the biological filtration system because it does not filter out bacteria. It will filter out uh, ick though so if I ever get a chance for another uh, ick outbreak somewhere I'm going to give this a go and see how that works out. It's definitely a non-chemical way of doing it, and uh, well, we'll see how that goes. So there you go, it's clear. Well, not perfectly clear. Uh, the problem with these filters is when it starts to plug up, uh, the flow rate really slows down, and yeah, you can't really take the chance of it uh, stopping because then it causes a bunch of problems. But anyway, it uh, did a pretty good job. So this, this is the neatest part here. <laughs> I'm gonna unplug the pump. You can see the water flow is really uh, slow near the top there, but as soon as I unplug the pump, this is all going to slough right off. It's really quite cool. <laughs> there it goes there. <laughs> it was only being held on by the water pressure, and it's quite neat. So anyway, if you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe, and like I said, just uh, let me know in the comments below what you think of this. It is a very retro filter, this, uh, but it is kind of a cool one. And I think it will have it does have its uses. Uh, it's not so much I don't think for the home use really, um, but yeah, it's, it's a cool kind of thing. So I'm gonna clean this out because another neat thing about it is uh, one of my favorite colors is actually the green that comes out of like uh, algae in this. Again, my my battery died, so I'm using it on my phone, which actually has a pretty good resolution. I found out. All you need to do is just swirl. Um, the intake screen there and it comes up quite clean and then just rinse it underwater. And to clean the filter itself it's just a simple matter of pouring some of it out, swirling it around and uh, dumping it out as well. Uh, it's actually very easy to clean, very easy to take care of. Just don't leave it sitting around when it's filled. And isn't that such a cool color? Anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video and uh, bye for now.